What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel and it is me. They call me Heat and you know we making some heat today. Today I'm gonna be uh, breaking down a, a, a beat that I made back in the, I wanna say the end of 2015 towards 2016. Something that never, it, it never really got the proper light so I wanted to bring it out and show you guys because it's one of my favorite beats that I've made ever, honestly. Um, I've made a lot of beats but this is one of my favorites for sure. It's just a smooth hip hop beat um, and it actually sounds like this right here. And that beat right there is called Arctic Winds. You can listen to that beat right now at youngheatbeats.com or you can just hit the link in the description below and check that beat out. Please guys, don't forget, follow me on Instagram at they call me heat. Follow me on Twitter at underscore they call me heat. And you can follow me or add me or like the page on Facebook, facebook.com slash they call me heat or just search producer young heat. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys hit that bell button. If you like the video afterwards, make sure you hit that like button as well. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go create, all right? Yeah. So what I started off with at first was um, just a simple pad style sound. Comes from Superstar O's, uh, the Jump Off Contact Expansion. Shout out to Superstar O. So that's what I played first, and that's the kind of the base of the track of pretty much what I started with. And that sounds like this. So I found three great chords that sound good together and I dropped that. So once I dropped that and put that in, the next thing I started focusing on was just my kick patterns, trying to get a kick out, trying to you know find a good groove. And I found that with these three kicks and I stacked my kicks. So I have just a normal hard kind of kick, then like a kind of a higher tone kick. Then I found they came out and sounded like this. And then I have like a lower tone kick just to kind of fill in that 4-4 to the floor pattern that I have going there. And that's what you're hearing in the background that. Just to kind of fill in that 4-4 to the floor, right? So the next thing that I did, um, and this is basically just the hook right here. I built it around the hook. And after that, I went and I added another sound, uh, which is going to be these roads here. And this is from Lounge Lizard. So I stacked this on top of the pads. You know, the same chord, but I added a little extra at the end to kind of you know, just add a little flavor to it, you know what I mean? So that's why that road sounds like that even at the end, because you notice in the first chords that I played, uh, it just kind of, the last chord just drug out. And then with the roads, I kind of added that extra little flair to it. So the next sound that I added was from Gladiator, and the lead sound is called Big Booty. Uh, <laughs> so if you guys are looking for that, that's what it's called. Um, basically, that got stacked on top of this, uh, the roads itself because the roads don't necessarily hit with the actual pad, they hit after the pad. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Just kind of adds a little bit more with the roads just to kind of make them stand out a little bit more. So that, that brought the the, the basically the meat, the, the basis of the track together. Um, and then I went and I added this like lead style sound because like I said, this is still the hook. So just something to kind of fill the hook in together. Just something simple for the hook. Um, and when you play them all together like that, it sounds like this. I 
really dope. I like the feel of it and I just kept rolling with that. Um, the next sound that I added was a crash, it's just an orchestra style crash and it sounds like this. Simple little crash there, just a simple crash. So then what I did was I went in and I found this hi-hat loop from a producer named Sick With It from Texas. He's really dope, really dope producer. He has a nice, a dope drum kit out, which sounds like this when you add it with the beat. Really great, really great hi-hat loop. It just kept the vibe going. Didn't really change it too much. It like really glued everything together percussion wise. There was another pad that I had that I grabbed from Serum and that pad sounds like this. And it just follows the main chord of the track. After I did that, um, I had one of my homies come in and actually pay, play the bass on it. And when he dropped the bass on it, it just was, I was like, it's done. Like nothing else needs to happen to this track. Like it's really done as far as the hook goes. So I'll play it with the bass for the hook. And this is what the, the bass on the actual hook sounds like. <laughs> So then that's the hook and as you know the beat progressed and I'm like okay the beat can't stay like this like it can't do that through the whole thing we got to change it up like there's something else that has to happen throughout the track um, so then we start getting into the verse and the verse is very simple I actually changed the drum pattern and actually added a snare in so this is what it sounds like when I changed it up <laughs> And shout out to my homie Izzy on the beats because he was in the studio with me when I was making this. So I was like, yo, what should I do with the hi-hats? Like, I don't want the hi-hats to, to stay the same. And he was like, why don't you just slow them down? And I'm like, good idea, man. Good idea. So shout out to my homie Izzy on the beats, man. Um, so what I did was that same hi-hat loop that I had there, um, I took it and I actually stretched it out more. So as you can see here, it's just a normal one bar kind of loop. Now you see here it's a two bar loop because we in double time. So then I had my homie, you know, come add some, you know, change the bass up for the verse. So I'm going to play it from the end of the hook leading into the verse. So you can kind of hear how it changes up um, for the verse. <laughs> So that's the that's the verse part and that's the first part of the verse so most of the time in a lot of commercial records nowadays there's not really 16 bar verses it's more so 12 and going into that what happened is my boy started playing something totally different on the guitar and I'm like yo that ver that what you're doing there is really dope I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put a different effect on it play the higher octave on the bass and I'll put like an effect to make it sound like it came from an actual guitar. And that's what we did. It sounds like this. that's pretty much that beat um that's really like the breakdown of that beat it really wasn't a lot going on but as you notice that i changed it up 
throughout the beat so it's not the same thing so there's three different things that's going on in this whole beat total throughout the whole so there's three different changes i should say so there's the the hook chain the hook one is one then the verse and then like the pre-chorus area before the actual hook comes on is something totally different as well and it all sounds very different you know i change things up to kind of keep the listener listening everything's not doing the same thing through the whole beat and that's something you want to think about as well when you're creating your beats is you don't want it to keep doing the same exact thing over over and over and over because the listener will get boring or the listener will get bored and then the artist really can't stand out um, the beat really drives the track these days and that's something you want to remember when creating your beats all right y'all so i hope you guys like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up make sure you guys subscribe make sure you guys hit that bell button right down there in the corner i don't want you to miss any more of these videos so don't forget to hit that bell button all right and until next time y'all peace